Hey guys, Tom Freight Railroad here, back with the third discussion video I've made. I don't know how many I've done. It's been a bit since I've made them, so I forgot. Um, but today we are going over thing tr trains, as usual, but more what differentiates them from each other. So like tank engines, tender engines, diesel, steam, electric. But also, one of the most interesting facts about steam locomotives, and diesels for that matter, is they have different things known as wheel configuration. Now for those of you that don't know what that is, that is just different sorting the wheels on the locomotive from front, middle, and back. Or, in train terms, pilot, driving, and trailing. Now on tender engines, the wheels on the tender do not count in wheel configuration. So, on a tank engine like this, which is a British one, this is what is known as an 060, because zero pilot, six driving, zero trailing. Now for larger locomotives that do need tenders, such as a Pennsylvania K4 or a Union Pacific Big Boy, for the, in the terms of the K4, they're what is known as a Pacific, or 462. So, four pilot, six driving, two trailing. Now, in the case of the big boy, it's special because it's what's known as an articulant locomotive. Articulant locomotives is when the boiler, is when the driving frame, is split in two. And yes, it's a, this is a beaten up one. I don't, know, I don't know what happened to this. I don't have the running big boy on hand, so... It's in this massive shed behind me. But if this thing was put together, it would have been shown as a 4884. Now articulant, like I said, the driving frame was split in two and would be held together by a hinge pin. And I mean a massive one. That way, both driving sections would still be connected to the boiler and usable. Now engines like Big Boy needed massive tenders, where engines such as the K4 didn't need quite as large tenders, but still needed fairly large ones. And the wheel on that just came off. Um, like I said, I don't know what happened to it. Now there are smaller engines than 060s, and there's such thing as an 040. I actually have two 040s. One is a tank engine like this one, and the other is a tender engine. Now, 040, just like the 060, means, except different driving amount, would be zero pilot, four driving, and zero trailing. So, 040s can be smaller than an 060 like this in length. But in size, that could be a different story. Now for things like saddle tank 040s, I have one which is a dockside um, Baltimore and Ohio Railroad C16 class. This is a saddle tank dock locomotive, which is an 040. And when you compare it to this British tank engine, it is taller. Unless I'm holding this wrong. But if I am, it's taller. But shorter in length. Or maybe about the same. I don't know, I, I have only one other 060 and it's, um, it's the Great Western one that I showed you in the content video, so. Or the one going over the content, but. So, there's multiple types of wheel configuration. There's 040s, 060s, Massive behemoths like Big Boy, 
Now there are smaller ones than Big Boy. Big Boy is the only one that's 4884. But there's Pacifics, like the K4, and a new member, Flying Scotsman. There are 484s, known as Northern Types, like the locomotive that's on the channel icon. And then there's 080s, meaning zero pilot, eight driving, zero trailing. And there's 442s, or, or Atlantics. So, now in the way of diesels, they're classified by axle. Now from what I know, because I don't know all that much, if there's six wheels in an axle on a diesel, that's known as a co-axle. But if there's four, that would be a bow axle. So say an engine like Canadian National number 4497, one that just got a video. Recommend you go watch it. Um, that is a Bobo configuration, meaning four wheels on each driving axle. Now for other locomotives, like say, this behemoth, it is a Coco axle, because there's six wheels on each axle. And also, it also depends on their boiler pressure on what they're good at. Or, or I guess the boiler pressure on it depends or determines how, many, how long a train or how heavy a train can haul. But engines like old 98 here, I'm not sure the exact boiler pressure these things had, but they were good for dock switching because that's what they were designed for. They had enough boiler pressure to, able to, to be able to move multiple freight cars around in a small area. Now for dock switchers, that's especially true because they worked around dockyards. Now say for engines like this one, as far as I know, these engines were originally built to shunt and haul passengers. So, engines like these had enough boiler pressure for that back in their day. But engines like these are designed to haul freight. They don't have boiler pressure. They have motors. Massive ones, I'd imagine. I've never actually seen one inside of one of these. But these things are very powerful and strong. Now, getting on back on the topic of steam locomotive capabilities, engines like Big Boy were tough enough to carry a five and a half mile long train up a grade like Sherman Hill in Wyoming without a back engine to push it up. And uh, also, there's a difference between passenger and freight. I mean, obviously, one pulls passenger, one pulls freight. But the difference is passengers ride on passenger cars, which are designed different from freight cars. In freight cars, while freight cars are designed to be more tough and durable, passenger carts are also designed to be tough, but also compatible and a bit comfortable. All right, that's enough of me jabbering on tonight. Uh, thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will, s and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.